Now let's explore the BX scan block diagram. Now for this we have to refer to the reference manual. Now let's go to the block diagram. So this is a dual CAN block diagram. So this microcontroller has dual CAN means it has two CAN controllers. One is CAN1. So this is CAN1 and this is CAN2. So as I said CAN1 is called as master and CAN2 is called as slave. So it feels quite misleading terminologies used in terms of CAN when you hear master and slave because you already know that CAN is not master and slave based communication, right? So CAN is multi master communication. So in QMX software or in the reference manual, uh, it says CAN1 as master and CAN2 peripheral as slave because of the features available in those CAN controllers. In ST's microcontroller, CAN1 is always called as master and other CAN controllers are called as slave because in this case, CAN2 has no direct access to the SRAM memory, that's it. And some of the features, if you want to enable in CAN2, you have to take the help of CAN1. So that's why CAN1 is called as master. So if you want to use CAN2 peripheral, then you have to enable CAN1 peripheral first. But in terms of implementation of CAN specification, CAN1 and CAN2 are same. Okay, so both are 2.0 AB specification based controllers. Uh, for example, in the reference manual, it is mentioned that CAN1 is master BX CAN for managing the communication between a slave BX CAN and the 512 byte of SRAM memory. So CAN2 is a slave BX CAN with no direct access to the SRAM memory. Now let's move forward. Now here you can see that so both has got their own transmit mailboxes. So for example, master has got three mailboxes. So this is actually used to transmit a CAN message. So you just have to put a CAN message in one of these mailboxes. Or you can put three TX messages or CAN messages into these uh, three uh, mailboxes and you can trigger the transmission. So similarly, slave has also got three mailboxes. Now master has got two receive FIFOs, FIFO 0 and 501. Slave has also got FIFO 0 and 501. So each receive FIFO, a maximum it can hold uh, three CAN messages. So it has got space for three CAN messages. If the fourth one comes then there will be an overrun. Okay, so if you don't read it. So similarly for the slave also it is same. But you can see here in between there is something called acceptance filtering. Now acceptance filtering is like as its name indicates it filters the CAN message based on your rules okay based on the rules you have given. And these uh, acceptance filters uh, there are 28 filter banks okay each filter bank has two filters okay, so that we'll explore later. But this acceptance filters are actually shared between master and slave. So if slave wants to use that, then you have to enable the master. Great. And these are all the control and uh, other registers. Obviously, a peripheral will have its own control registers. It will have its uh, status registers. It will have the data registers, etc. Okay, interrupt control registers. So all are part of the peripheral and the major part of this peripheral is apart from the specification implementation. So specification implementation will be that is actually a mandatory in implementation right. So that is CAN 2.0b specification implementation okay. So that is full featured in both CAN 1 as well as CAN 2 and apart from that ST has given this is ST's design, okay? So they have given three mailboxes, TX mailboxes, uh, receive FIFOs and acceptance filtering and also there you will find one transmission scheduler, okay? So that is required because uh, when you keep uh, all the messages uh, in the mailboxes and when you trigger the transmission, then transmission scheduler have to check which message has got higher priority. So by checking the identifier value and it has to schedule that message 
uh, first, isn't it? So then the CAN controller should participate in the arbitration. Then if arbitration wins, then the CAN controller is going to transmit that message. So in transmission, there are lots of stages involved and we will discuss that later. Okay, so when we discuss about the TX path of the CAN peripheral. Okay, great. So now let's move forward and the BX CAN peripheral of the STS microcontroller comes with uh, three test modes. Okay, so one is called silent mode, loopback mode and silent plus loopback mode. So this is basically uh, to test your CAN controller before you introduce that into the CAN network. So in the first exercise, we are going to do exercise on CAN loopback mode. And in the next lecture, I'm going to explain what exactly each mode means. Okay, so you'll see that in the next lecture.